Jason. Da -da 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 -da. Hey. Hey, everyone. Hey. This is NBC IGN's Nintendo Podcast. I'm your host, Casey DeFridis, and I'm here today with Tom Mark. Hello. Per Schneider. Hi. And Brian Altano. Hi. Hello. Today, we're going to talk about, of course, the Nintendo Switch Lite. Oh. The thing Whoa. that we've been theorizing and seeing rumors about for literally forever. It's mm -hmm. real. And also, of course, Pokemon, because there's a new trailer with new Pokemon revealed. Mm -hmm. And for those of you watching at home, uh, you might see a little dessert on the table. <laughs> So we're going to talk about that first before it melts. That's, so <laughs> oh, it's a melt. It's it can melt. Well, it's whipped cream, and whipped oh. cream loses stabilization because I was unable to make homemade stabilized whipped cream at home so because my market closes at eight p.m. <laughs> so this is so. based on this is a, a white poison Pikmin from the Pikmin no. series. It does look that so, way. So um, this is based off Alchemy, and Alchemy is a new cream Pokemon oh that is God. a fairy type. Casey. This, and it, you just yeah, you're gonna have to let her get through this because it, okay. uh, this isn't this is like the top of the roller coaster. We're about to go on a ride. Yeah, trust this me. is this is strap in. <laughs> All right, so for the next so, 45 minutes, no, no, okay. no I meant okay. this I'll Pokemon. I'll put timestamps okay. if you want to skip, but All you right. should mm -hmm. listen to this. So Alchemy is a new fairy type Pokemon <laughs> that produces sweet cream, and therefore it is no. prized by pastry chefs to it's, be its partner Pokemon. It's not the better you treat it, the tastier the cream no. it produces is. You it can't throws say that. You its can't cream. This is from the web. Website. I am quoting Casey. the official Pokemon.com website. It also throws its cream to distract. No, enemies, can't. No, no. To can't say blind that either. it and confuse it. No, and you... eating the cream will sometimes make Pokemon become euphoric and confused. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's a children's game. <laughs> I love how they cut, they, cut a bunch, they cut a bunch of Pokemon from this game, but they were like, don't worry, we have the executing This Pokemon happy can cream also Gigantamax, which no, is what? a brand new mechanic in which it becomes very large. And when it is Gigantamaxed, its cream hardens on impact. Oh. Alchemy, the cream Pokemon. That also turns into a wedding cake. Yes. Casey, when this was announced, did you and Miranda just like... Light a bonfire and dance, like a joyous, like this Pokemon euphoric dance. So, um, I made this dessert. It's based off strawberries and cream. That's which how is she celebrated. A, she made uh, a dessert, like a a type of dessert. I think they eat during tea time mm -hmm. in England. Yep. Uh, so Brian, we talked about this briefly yesterday in the lunchroom. In the lunchroom, <laughs> publicly in front of many people, to which I navigated the minefield of HR violations, to which he threw towards me just by simply explaining something that exists on a public website. Um, so I made you a strawberries and cream dessert. That's for me? Yeah, that's for you, Brian. <laughs> There's a strawberries and cream cupcake at the, at the bottom. If I eat it, will I become more euphoric? <laughs> it, it, it will not throw the cream at anyone. I feel bad. There's only one spoon here, and I won the cupcake. No, so I, so this I did, is for me? I, yeah. You're so for sweet. You. I Thank brought you. enough to make for everyone, but I figured I'd give everyone the choice to I don't, eat it or not. I, You're I, the I, only one who doesn't have I shouldn't choice. eat on a podcast, but I guess I will do yeah, it's, it's forbidden it's to eat. I will like definitely have one after this okay. podcast. We have done unboxings at IGN, and awesome. we have done Let's Plays. This is, I think, the first time we've done a Let's, let's Taste of, <laughs> yeah, of a Pokemon. So I think all the good stuff is at the bottom. Just yep. It's so funny. What do you mean you think? Did, did, I made it. Did okay. you let the somebody else pack this bottom. dessert for you? But um, okay. next oh time, I'm going to like actually make real versions of this. That is good Pokemon. That's my new starter. Is it delicious? I treated my alchemy very, very nicely to get. Holy crap, Casey! Cream. This is really good. What, wasn't it like a month ago that we were talking about like Pokemon you can eat, yes, and now we're alchemy. literally yeah. eating a Pokemon on the show? This is so that disturbing. Was the plan. This is so, like one of the best things I've ever eaten. What, <laughs> Brian? Thanks. It's just like pure whipped cream and strawberries and cupcake. Beats, oh, I'm, I'm beats swimming again. with That's alligators, good. huh? <laughs> mm. So enough about alchemy. Um, <laughs> Let's talk about the other new Pokemon. We'll we'll circle back what? to Gigantamaxing. Yeah, guys, there's another new Pokemon. You guys I'll be over here. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> yep. wow. um, so we also learned about, gosh, Roly Coley. So this Pokemon produces coal. So about 100 years ago in the Galar region, every family needed one to produce coal so they could stay warm because the Galar region is very cold. <laughs> Uh, but, but they don't need that anymore because now electricity exists. That is decidedly less sexual than the last yes. Pokemon just, we've Just described. slightly. Just mildly. I don't know. Wait for the 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 erect version of this one. <laughs> mm. And um, this is what? Yamper. That's a Corgi. Yeah, it's a Corgi. It's the an electric The sexiest corgi. Pokemon. So Yamper uh, can't store any of the electricity it produces. So it is seen constantly scampering around to make its electricity so it can use it to shock things. Um, there. I, I cannot believe how good this is. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is like you, you have a f you 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 two over there. You and Tom need to quit and start like a pastry shop. 
<laughs> just I'll make cakes and, and Tom will make pies. Tom's the pie guy. It's great. There we I'm go. in. Okay, so suffice it to say, this one is your new favorite since the cream Pokemon. This is this? the puppy Pokemon. Okay. Or the Corgi. The Corgi. Yeah, we love I think the cream Pokemon is my favorite since the horse one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Mudbray. That's right. The best donkey. A great mm-hmm. donkey. But um, Yamper is obviously very cute. It is a puppy Pokemon. I think I prefer Rockruff as far as puppy Pokemon go. Of course. Also, Brian, I won't be offended if you don't finish it. I'm going to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm 90% done. Uh-huh. There's so much. I'm going to be bouncing off the where, walls. Too. Where, it is great. Where, where is the maxed out version? So this one doesn't have one. Uh, I'll go That's back to it. that in a second. No. This is a uh, Duraludon, which is mm-hmm. a Dragon Steel type Pokemon, the first Dragon Steel type Pokemon that is not a legendary or mythical type Pokemon, mm. and it is basically the Mecha Godzilla version of Tyranitar ah. because they share the same habitats and they always fight each other. Okay, it's kind of great. Yep. I like. I really like that that they're yeah. making a Mecha Godzilla to their Pokemon yeah. Yeah. Godzilla. Well, Pretty you much. know, they had Red Li- uh, Ridley, and you know. That was unbelievable. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm glad you enjoyed it. No, that was. I was like, I don't. I've been podcasting for like a decade. I've never had like a wonderful de- dessert in the middle of. Yeah, one well, of them. well, it's your birthday today, so <sighs> congratulations. It's not at all. Like, it's actually, actually. This might be a really good strategy going forward. Is just when we talk about Pokemon, just distract Brian with treats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're almost done too. If we you we guys almost got order through pizza the segment. when Fire Emblem comes out, and I can just sit in the corner and quietly eat while they you do just... have tea time in Fire Emblem. I think, Perfect. Right? Yeah, they do. Perfect. They do have tea time. Oh my tea God! Time. Shout K- out to Casey. Casey, keep going. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Great work. So uh, this Pokemon, <laughs> the one that you can't eat because it's made mm-hmm. of metal, only weighs eighty-eight pounds. Okay. Because its really? metal is very light. It's, it's five a type feet of 11. titanium. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's very special. Mm-hmm. Um, my water bottle. This is this is a slideshow. This is not a new one that they announced. This is one that we learned okay. about at E3 and it's I don't even remember what this, this is. This is called, ear, called ear Monkey. You? What is that? Like some some sort of like Pokemon. Batman I symbol can't see... goblin? There we go. Uh Impidimp is a dark fairy type Pokémon. Almost. Impidimp. 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 Yeah. Yeah. What happens? <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sorry. I'm not <laughs> saying it. Okay. I'm not doing it. And I'm not eating it. <laughs> I was so, gonna, <laughs> I was going to make a very inappropriate joke, but I will not. We already we got we parents been, mad who are listening in their cars. I, I just was repeating verbatim what is on the Pokemon.com website. That's right. <laughs> so, there is definitely going to be a Pokemon episode where Team Rocket, because they're always poor, are going to try and steal one of these Alchemy so they can eat its cream and then come up with a scheme to sell it and get rich. But the Alchemy's cream isn't going to taste good because they're not going to be nice to it. A cream scheme? Know. The cream scheme. That was, that was a really good one I just had. I think you should, put the, you should put this recipe up somewhere. Okay. You really should that. publish that. I'll put All it right. in the comments. So people right. can make their own Strawberries alchemy Strawberries and at home. cream with cupcake. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. So <laughs> we also learned about Gigantamax Pokemon. And that might sound familiar because we already learned about Dynamax Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Gigantamax Pokemon. Man, I don't even know where to start. So only certain <laughs> individuals of certain species can Gigantamax, whereas every Pokemon can Dynamax. Yeah, that's, I mean, just like in real life. Yeah, just like in real life. And uh, they become uh, crazy versions of themselves. They so all this become is wedding cakes. Gigantamax yeah. Alchemy. Mm-hmm. Um, this, here, let me go back this way, actually. Um, this is Gigantamax Ooh. Dreadnought. Wow. And this is Gigantamax uh, Corviknight. Oh, they're getting um, all like ravey with so, like glow in the dark colors and yeah, stuff. They get really, yeah. really big and they sometimes look very differently. And Corviknight's um, feathers actually detach off of it and act independently and can be used as blades. But mm-hmm. once That's a terrifying. Pokemon, yeah, once a Pokemon Gigantamaxes, they gain a new move called a G-Max move that is exclusive mm. to that species of Pokemon. So for example, every Dreadnought, once it Gigantamaxes, will get the G-Max move Stone Surge, in which it deals water type damage and puts out Stealth Rock. And Stealth Rock is a very important move in competitive scene. And Alchemy does something where it's does damage to the opposite field, but heals its side of the field. And then <laughs> the Corviknight will deal damage and also produce the effect of Defog. Um, <laughs> this this makes sense to everyone <laughs> who plays Pokemon. Defog gets rid of all like status yep. ailments type things, mm-hmm. and uh, Stealth Rocks makes it so that uh, damage is dealt to any Pokemon that switches in on the opposite side of the field, which is four times uh, effective against Pokemon like Charizard. So Great. Uh, okay. Yeah. So anyway, the way you get 
<laughs> I'm sorry, just like I'm boring sl- you guys. No, it's not at no, all. No, 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 not boring at all. I'm also, I'm it's sort of in a ridiculous. dessert coma right now, so yeah. there's just this like. I'm sorry. This, like, no, my, I had, head, my head's just going like, hello, darkness, my <laughs> just like, I slowly <laughs> zooming into my brain. Flashbacks to the first time we had Casey on, and, and somebody asked a question about like stats or something in yep. a game, and then we got like. <laughs> 15 minutes of just like, and of course the EXP is she, she higher knows, on the blah, blah, blah. She knows her stuff. Um, it's She's a she's a walking telephone book, this woman. So. That's true. If yeah. you want to know an exact comparison between Dynamax and Gigantamax and how to catch Gigantamax Pokemon and what this means, there is an article about it on IGN.com. I think if you just search like IGN Pokemon Gigantamax versus Dynamax, it should come up. Cool. Um, but no, this is really interesting because the only way you can get Gigantamax Pokemon is by doing um, raids. So, they're supposed to be really rare. Okay, cool. Yep. That's great. Good. Yeah. I mean, that good rewards, right? Yeah. I've played games where you spend a lot of time in raids and you got a stupid weapon, not the one I wanted. <laughs> Thank you, Destiny. I think this would be random. <laughs> I'm not sure. But mm-hmm. we also learned that there will be version-exclusive Pokemon, which we assumed, and also version-exclusive gym leaders, which we did not assume. Yeah, that's an interesting mm-hmm. switch up because, uh, th- you know, the the idea that... The, ver- the Pokemon version, or like what Pokemon are in which version, was sort of becoming less pressing now that there's like online trading and mm-hmm. there's a lot more connectivity with the internet and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and so the fact that the versions are going to have differences in gym leaders too is actually a pretty big one. Like it's yeah. actually going to change your experience playing through the game beyond just oh, what Pokemon do you catch? Because you might not see all the Pokemon in any version, any given version anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. So we did see this a little bit in Pokemon Black and White. Uh, The Dragon-type gym leaders were different characters with different Pokemon. Right. But you still had a Dragon-type gym. I think it was the eighth gym, and you had Iris, and I don't remember that old dude's name. I'm sorry. Um, (laughs) Iris was the main character in the anime. Of course I remember her. (laughs) Um, But... For example, with this one, which one is this? This button. That's the wrong button. It's this button. I found it. So yeah. in Pokemon Sword, you will face um, Bea, gym leader Bea, who's a fighting type gym leader. And in Pokemon Shield, you will face Alistair, which is a ghost type gym leader. And his mask and his overall appearance kind of reminds me of Killua's sister in Hunter x Hunter. Um, <laughs> yeah. I guess that's all you really need to know. I, don't, I really I don't know what that is either. That's okay. Brian, it's okay. It's like the last two episodes of that anime. <laughs> you haven't seen that? No. Come on, man. It's a really good anime. What, what, what was it called again, Brian? Hunter Hunter. Kill. Oh, I'm sorry. Damn it. <laughs> you ruined it. Uh, the, there's we were talking a little bit a while ago when they announced the legendaries about this idea of do they look like Digimon or not? And and the Pokemon design I think is something that you can argue over. But one thing that I feel like everyone sort of agrees on right now with this Pokemon is mm-hmm. that the gym leader designs and the character designs are really cool. They mm-hmm. rule. They're really neat. There's that one guy who kind of doesn't have a nose, Milo. But besides, <laughs> I, like I still like him as a character. I, mm-hmm. I I really really am happy with the the character design so far. Cool. Yeah. I am too. It's awesome. So, I think there's obviously more to talk about Pokemon, but oh, so much. No, so I'm sorry. Casey. I think hey. we covered a pretty Clearly. much all. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think we covered a lot. I think, yep. this is enough. I think Brian needs another dessert. That was so good. <laughs> <laughs> that was really. I want really us good. to finish here so I can get my cream Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Alchemy, the mm-hmm. best, tastiest Pokemon. That's true. Hey, Probably hey guys, don't Google its name with safe search off no. though. <laughs> It's. I think it's a play on alchemy, right? Like mm-hmm. yep. alchemy. Yeah. Probably. Because yep. alchemy, you make things, and alchemy makes cream. Y- yeah. I don't know. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I kept our Pokemon segment under 15 minutes today, guys. I hope everyone is happy. No, it's okay. I got yeah. to eat during it. That yeah. was good. Yeah, All right. I feel like a big happy gotta, boy. We just got to do this every time. It's like giving a lollipop, a kid a lollipop when he goes to like the grocery store. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or the just, bank. Yeah. Or the yeah. Exactly. My, or the my entire body is like buzzing right now. <laughs> that was that was awesome. So next up, the topic that everyone, I believe, wants to talk about yeah. reels, is the Nintendo Switch Lite. <gasps> That's oh. right. It's real. I it's know. It's finally announced. It's real. Uh, this Nobody was, could have seen this coming. Yeah. Never. This well, was a very, very awesome uh, sort of surprise announcement that I think happened, what, five o'clock this morning? Yeah. It was then, stupid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I woke up and all of the Slack channels were like a hundred messages long. Yeah. Sam's replying to us and he's in Japan. He's supposed to be on vacation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, guys, 
Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> uh, I, you know, for, first of all, I, I was surprised that it got announced this close to E3, mm-hmm. and why not at E3? But then I thought about it, and it's we're in the new fiscal quarter, and so I think mm-hmm. Nintendo huh. wanted something nice out of E3 to yep. tell their investors with, hey, we're working on another, another Zelda game, um, and then they wanted something nice for the f- the third quarter of this year, which is obviously the announcement of new hardware and, yeah. you know, more faith in the stock and the sales of the units later this year. I, I mean, I, I'm always sort of baffled as to when mm-hmm. the, the right strategy is to announce the, the release and, and price for new hardware when your concurrent hardware is selling yeah. so well already, because um, it effectively does cannibalize the sales of that. But I do think that this is going for slightly different markets. So I guess we'll do, what, the, the rundown of it? Yeah, let's do the stats. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, $199.99, which is $200 here. In the states, so 100 bucks less than a Switch. It uh, launches on September 20th. Right. It launches in three colors, which is turquoise, yellow, which is like a lemony yellow, and mm-hmm. then gray or banana yellow or banana yellow, <laughs> depending on whatever <laughs> fruit or citrus you enjoy the most. Um, and it is handheld only. The Joy Cons do not detach. It has a slightly improved battery life. They said that it will go somewhere up to seven hours. So about 30 um, minutes more. Little, yeah, like 30 minutes more, which I think is like. Good, right? Not yeah. great, but, but up, good. up to an hour more, I thought. Um, yeah, yeah, and so uh, you won't be able to connect it to your TV. Uh, it doesn't come with a dock. It doesn't <laughs> doesn't come with a, a a Nintendo. What 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 do we call that? The grip. Yeah, um, the yeah, the charge grip, grip or the Joy-Con grip. Um, grip. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so I think this is obviously very strategically set for a slightly younger market. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, probably the more the the traveler people who I have friends I, that work in the industry. I think we all do. Someone like um, Andrew Goldfarb has, I believe, literally never docked his Nintendo Switch. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! I, yeah. So I actually think it's more for kids mm-hmm. because I I feel like this is they looked at their market and they said we did not convert. We converted everybody who had a Wii U. Because those people will buy anything to Switch. We converted everybody there, but there are a lot of 2DS, 3DS owners out there and people who are into Pokemon who haven't made the Switch to Switch. And yeah, there right? is a special edition Pokemon Sword and Shield Switch Lite, which mm-hmm. we assumed. And now I'm thinking, why didn't they call it the Light Switch yeah. after saying Switch That would have been Lite. good. That yeah. sounded like and, I was saying it wrong. And, yeah. And so they're... they're, they're I like de- the idea of a mom walking in a GameStop. Do you guys sell Light Switches? They're like, what are you doing? Oh, it's going to happen. But their their DS sales have been going down, right? Yeah. So obviously this is a replacement for their handheld line of devices. And they're using... It's the Switch, you know... It's a Switch system repackaged and, and redone. Simpler, cheaper. Mm-hmm. I'm super bummed it doesn't support TV play. I'm yeah. I, it's, first I of all, I would have 100% went and bought one, but. it It's like, you know. It just it, doesn't make sense to me. It's the brand Switch was chosen for a reason. It's that you can play it on the go, on a tabletop, and on your TV. And now they're reusing. Sure. They're using the Switch brand for something that is that can no longer switch. I guess you can switch the games for multitudes of experiences. So I, I think <laughs> that's a bummer because I wish they had. What a spin. I wish they had come up with a way where it doesn't ship with the dock and they would release a new dock that you can use and still play on the TV or tr- a cable to connect or something. But not having that ability just seems. Yeah. I don't know. It, well, it, to, it, yeah. yeah. Well, if I may. It, it just doesn't make sense to me, mm-hmm. and and it's not that I'm, it's not that I don't get it because everything you said is totally right, right? Mm-hmm. Like this idea of just having a mobile only Switch for the people who care about Pokemon and Fire Emblem and that sort of those mobile games, yeah. who just want to get a 2DS sort of replacement for cheaper. All of that 100 percent everything sense makes to you. sense, yeah. And if 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 you're not that person and you want the Switch, the thing that switches, yep. then hundred bucks more, then it's a hundred dollars more. Yeah. I get all of that. The thing that makes it not make sense to me is the fact that there is the same USB-C plug on the bottom of the system in the exact same spot, but for some reason, it just doesn't work. And they sprung for Bluetooth, obviously, for multiplayer and pro controller connection and all of that. Like, I can't, I I don't know, and I'm sure that a lot goes into shaving off $100 off this price and still making it so that they're making money off of it. I'm sure that they have to cut a lot of things for that. But it just is, like, I don't, and this is partly because I just don't know, but Mm -hmm. I don't understand how cutting video through that cable port saves them enough money like a like a non-negligible amount of money do you know what yeah, i mean right like yeah, it right. just is like a, it's an 
odd, odd choice. But, to but make. they've done this before. They've dropped certain ports from their devices mm -hmm. where you know. And if it was a port, made, yeah. if they, it was a port, it would make sense to me. Yeah. But literally, the port is there. Yeah. No, I mean they they made a two D three DS. Guys, like that mm -hmm. was like thing. That, there was like years where they're like, play all your games in 3D or don't anymore. Yeah, yeah. but the they, difference, the difference is that when when people had the 3DS, they were like, this is great, but I play it with 2D off most so, of the time. Yeah. Whereas people like like the switching capabilities. Also, there's the issue. So the Nintendo Switch Lite doesn't come with a tabletop stand. Yeah, mm -hmm. doesn't because the Joy Cons don't come off to play it in tabletop stands. Right. So you have to purchase additional accessories. Like and stand, I did the yeah. math. So if you get a stand. A separate thing of Joy Cons and a charger for your Joy Cons because you cannot charge them on the Nintendo Switch. Yep. comes out to be about a hundred dollars, <laughs> and these are the the cheapest items I could find on Amazon with like reputable reviews. So this Do is what I would buy because I'm cheap, but also don't like broken things. So wait, if that's if you were to that's a, sort of an edge case though, right? Yeah, because mm -hmm. most yeah. people, if you already have a Switch, you already have Joy Cons. You already have um, yeah, like way a way charge to charge them. your your, your Joy-Cons, and so you're really what you're looking at is a $13 stand. But I guess technically you don't need a stand; you can just like you can prop get it up a, against some books or something. You can like, get a cheap you can get a cheap um, charger too. There's the third party stuff that's not well, that much. I guess the the separate Joy-Cons is really where the yeah. costliness is coming in. Oh, they that's cost. $70, $70. I, would, I would also guess that 90% of the people buying this thing have no intention of playing local multiplayer off of one screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like so I I do. I like I I understand that there that there no will Mario be Party for you. Yeah, no Mario Party for you, right? Um, I I think like hmm. where it gets interesting is stuff like Smash Brothers or like sort of like single screen multiplayer games. But um, I mean the hardcore Smash community is not going to buy this thing at all because it's no. Wi-Fi only. It's not for um, them. So I w I was actually thinking about the you know the the docking thing like maybe less the less cost savings. It's about uh, about the size of the yeah. system. When mm. you dock your Switch, it runs much harder, right? Like it has right. to work a lot harder when it's connected and basically overclocked to display the, the television image. Yep. And sense. maybe the smaller form factor makes it more difficult to, uh, to so that the thing doesn't fry itself, yeah, right? I saw, Who I knows? Saw, I saw a game developer actually tweeting about a similar mm -hmm. thing, saying, you know, maybe it is just a heat problem yeah. because the Switch as it is, you know, it doesn't have overheating problems in a, like, a bad way, but it definitely has trouble removing heat from the system, especially when it's been docked yeah. for a while. So that's that's something that I would believe. I'm just and again, still for the sad price, they didn't right? make it work. You, right. can, you can deal with anything. Like an iPhone obviously works right, with right, powerful right. graphics, but at a higher cost. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, the iPhone is tremendously su successful and doesn't connect to your television. It can, you know? though. <laughs> it can. Can it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, with Apple TV stuff. Yeah, no, you for can. For a portal, <laughs> yeah, a I, I, yeah owner, that's like again. I don't. That's not a thing I see a lot of people doing. No. You yeah, know? you can. No, it's because why? Yeah, right. Because you don't. Then you have to buy a separate controller for your iPhone, which nobody <laughs> does. I know there are people who do that, but what were you saying, Casey? Oh, I was just <laughs> 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 sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was. Um, I was just gonna say, as someone who already owns a Switch, I intended to buy a port. A smaller version. I intended to buy the mini mm -hmm. version with the special, the po special Pokemon edition, so I could leave my other Switch, expensive Switch, at home and take this one with me. Yeah. And this price point, with what I get, is not enough for me to make that second purchase. Yeah. Well, would you? Would you? Uh, are you that. into you into the logging in, logging out system? Because they don't have a true account so, system. So they do if you have Nintendo Switch online, and mm -hmm. the system is actually very easy. It's equivalent to what you do with. PlayStation. Yeah. So um, if you have Nintendo Switch Online, you have your primary account and your primary system, you can log into any system and download any game, download your save files from any system as long as you're connected to the internet and those are your secondary. But you can have, I don't know, I've, I have four different secondary switches and that works. And you, you log yeah. in, log out all yeah. the time. Okay, good. So that's, that's awesome. And that's I'm, been fine. But I'm, you need the Nintendo Switch Online account to do, do that. But right. this is possible. It is possible for this to be your on-the-go switch and to leave your other switch just docked all the time. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, some quick thoughts on this is that I, I tweeted about this earlier about how I don't need this thing, but I'm probably going to get it anyway because, mm -hmm. first of all, I love opening up Nintendo hardware. And yeah. One, I'm a sucker for that thing. Consumerism fills the empty hole in my heart. <laughs> um, but two, I travel a lot. And this thing seems like a pretty nice uh, sort of thing to be able to chuck in my backpack yeah. and not have to worry about too much. It's So will you move your SD card every time? No, I believe what I'll do is I'll get like a secondary SD card. Oh, so for like three hundred dollars like no <laughs> no I, I won't get a, I won't get a I have a 400 gigabyte 
SD card in my Switch Now. That's which what, 100 bucks now? It was, I think it was $80 when I bought yeah. it a okay. year ago. And All so right, it's even cheaper enough. now. Okay. That was one of those things that when it first launched, it was like hundreds of dollars, and then everyone who waited was rewarded by yeah. it being cheaper. <laughs> um, and so I, I think that like having one Switch at home and having one for the go is kind of cool. I know it negates the entire purpose of the system since it's mm-hmm. literally designed to be taken anywhere. But I do like the idea of like sort of something smaller, cheaper that I can knock around a little bit. Mm-hmm. The real issue that ever that stopped me in the past from buying repeat like uh, reissues of Nintendo handhelds and redesigns was that there was no cloud save system. Yeah. There was no I way do. to to bring games from place to place. And so if I can take like t- my 10 or 12 favorite games and put them on my Switch Lite and access my cloud saves and then I don't know, fly to Germany or something like that yeah. for Gamescom, um, although this comes out afterwards. I was thinking the same thing. I know. <laughs> yeah. So actually the big miss here for me personally is that this comes out the same day as Link's Awakening and there isn't a Zelda version of it. Yeah. Well, there is a hideous Pokemon version that Tom I like likes. It. I Ooh. love it. I, think I, it's I, I like the other colors. Mm-hmm. They, and by the way, the, the the molding, the plastic and everything, the material looks really nice. It like, does. I actually don't have any complaints about the system. I think this is a really smart move, especially for the Pokemon Yeah, launch. we funny, actually funny. we haven't yeah. mentioned that the, the screen looks is actually, nice. the real estate of the screen is a little smaller. Yeah, for right. sure. It's 5.5 instead of 6.2. Yeah. It yeah. looks very sharp. It's a, it looks nice. Yeah. I think yeah. it's about as big as a like a like an iPhone 7 Plus or a 10 yeah. S Max or whatever it is. Uh, um, Funny enough, I actually <laughs> I like. like I, I really like the design. I think it's funny how close it looks to some of the fan renders that have been yeah. coming out over no, the yeah. last year. Well, it's a no-brainer to redesign, it is. though. It I, is. Yeah. Um, but I actually kind of would have been okay with it going even a little smaller, right? Really? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, no, like I, I, I don't know, and maybe I'll sit. I'll be like, never mind. Once we actually get our hands on it, it'll be too small or something like that. But mm-hmm. looking at it just now, I, like I'd be cool with it being it's a little bit slimmer than it is. It's bigger I, than a Vita, mm-hmm. and I played Vita forever, you know, yeah. for a long time. Uh, I am that was a thing. I'm 100 percent buying one of these, yeah. but I'm buying one. <sighs> I, but I'm buying one because I want to have a second Switch to play multiplayer games like Animal Crossing or Pokemon uh, with yeah. my girlfriend, yeah. and we just kind of need one, and I want a cheaper switch because yeah. she's yeah. never going to use it docked ever mm-hmm. right she already uses my current switch just undocked on the couch all the time so we just need a second one and it kind of doesn't matter if it's docked it doesn't matter what ability like features it has it's just a cheaper switch to me i guess mm. my my situation is slightly different but i wanted a second switch for the same reason i wanted both me and my boyfriend to have our separate switches so we can you know, play Monster Hunter together, right, play right. Pokemon together. But he uses his docked because my living room has two TVs in it with all of our separate systems hooked up to our TVs. And I understand <laughs> that that is not a normal thing. And a line of tape <laughs> down the center of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to buy one because I'm a hopeless collector. And, and I walked yeah. into the room gonna buy thinking all four. I wouldn't buy one, but then you guys are talking about it. So now I feel like I, I have so, to get one. But... I also own a lot of Joy-Con. I don't know if you. Uh, I don't know if you knew this. Oh, you have thousands. Yeah, you have I have all the Joy-Con. They still connect to this in tabletop. But yeah. you have a I really though, like right? switching yeah. colors when traveling and yeah. like having a little variety, matching mm-hmm. them to my outfits. Not yeah. really. I don't <laughs> have many yellow outfits, but um, that that it, that's a little bit of a bummer. I I don't love the color scheme for the Pokemon one. I do. Me neither. Um, I, I wish cool. there was something a little bit more like a bigger departure. Like the you guys mocked up a bunch of designs. Like the uh, oh yeah. The yeah. clear purple or something like that, like a throwback. Um, yeah, we did. We did a, a, a quick image gallery on IGN today of just like mocking up a bunch of different mm-hmm. ones, and some of them were the sort of you know the 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 purple launch GBA color, mm-hmm. one based on the original Game Boy, one based on the Super NES, um, uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so one thing that I I haven't seen a lot of people talking about is Labo. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not going to work. It doesn't. No work. IR. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And so even Labo VR, like the the sort of form factor of this thing, is so different than anything else that they've mm. been building. And Labo VR launched like just a month or two ago. I mean, that was effectively like their big hardware launch of the year. I know the hardware was made of cardboard, but still. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. And so you won't be able to de- detach Joy-Con, and you won't be able to do a, a a number of other things. So I I do find that a little interesting. Mm. That, I'm- also curious that the so it says there's no HD rumble. Does that mean there's no rumble? At there's all? no rumble. And how do you work around that with games that have features that require rumble? Like I, Super Mario Odyssey, you need rumble to find moons, right? Like, yeah, like but that? I mm. believe I believe is they, there another thing? I believe there's a way around that. There's not like an audio cue. Also, there, there, there's, so. there's definitely yeah. an accessibility um, thing here. Okay. Does it have? Bet, yeah. Does it have gyro or whatever? 
it, it has does to, right? have gyro. Yeah. Does it? Yeah, I didn't I didn't see it mentioned, but um, yeah, I didn't see it, it mentioned it, either. It, it's gotta. Um, and then there's a there's some games it won't be compatible at all because they're they're like TV mode only. Right. So I, I that's actually a small couldn't find list. any games. Yeah. So I don't I don't think that's actually like I I looked at all the games that support TV only. Like for example, Mario Party is a game that's challenging because you have to play with one Joy-Con. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They right. didn't build the controls to be you holding both sides of the the Switch. Oh, right, so they right. either going to patch it or this game there'll be a caveat saying like, mm-hmm. "Oh, you have to use a separate Joy-Con." You can use it in tabletop like mode. Yeah. 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 Same thing um, with one two Switch. But, yeah, that's that's why even the games that won't be compatible i bet will be compatible through additional controllers well it reminds me of the um the new 3ds um, yeah that had like a slightly a slightly stronger chipset and had a very small group of exclusive games yeah i believe that there was a chronicles it, yeah was it there didn't a monster matter. hunter it wasn't exclusive it yeah. just okay. had a, a nub Binding, it enough. That's right. Binding of Isaac. Yeah, there were yeah, a couple yeah. of games developed for it. Specifically. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think I've had a little bit of a realization sitting here thinking about this mm-hmm. stuff, which is mm-hmm. that th- the reason that the Switch Lite seems kind of like, well, why can't it do this? And why not? that? And, 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 and like, why isn't it that this doesn't work and that does and all that stuff? Like, the reason that feels so kind of pronounced, I think, is because one of the, in my eyes, one of the sort of claimed fames of the Switch, one of the selling points was. It can do absolutely everything. Yeah. However you want to play, this will support it, right? Right. That was what its whole spiel was. Mm -hmm. And so it feels kind of funny to say, here's a version of the Switch that can do this one thing. It is not intended to do everything, which is why some games aren't going to work on it or are going to be weird on it. And it's the reason that it's sort of, I at least am having this like, whoa, like kickback reaction to seeing it. But at the same time, for what, for the purpose that it serves, for what it can do, I think it's actually gonna be a really cool, pretty well priced yeah. switch. And it's it's Nintendo continuing, yep. uh, obviously continuing their line of, of handheld games, and they don't have a competitor in, a, in the market now. Yeah. So it's everything about it is small, uh, smart. I think it also they need something this holiday season because the 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 other two guys are gonna drop their prices. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. They are now in their final year. They will yeah. release new hardware next year, which means the switch will look really expensive next to them. Mm-hmm. Right, totally. it is new. It is new hardware compared to these six, seven-year-old machines, and um, so having another SKU and being able to play with the price points a bit is is really smart for them. Um, no, like the the branding thing, it does really bug me. It's the equivalent of having the 3DS line or the DS line and saying, "Here is a DS with one screen." It's like, no, the whole <laughs> purpose of the DS was to have two screens interact, yep. right? Yep. And the S we didn't get a one DS where you go like, wait a se- second, dual yeah. screen one. Right. The yeah. the switch, the entire branding, the logo, the click yeah. in mm-hmm. the animated intros. <laughs> There's no clay. It's the control is, is connecting. It, yeah, I mean it's all right there, right? Like even when you look at the switch iconography everywhere, it's it's the sort of asymmetrical Ooh. sticks and. What is the sound of a uh, switch light clicking? It's it's, it's just it's like sla- sadly sliding into your large cargo short pocket. <laughs> it's the same know. as the sound of one hand clapping. Right? It's yeah. just like oh. <laughs> it's, it's nothing. Um, I have so many questions still. Yeah, this because um, how do you capture from with the Nintendo Switch Lite? Well, there's still the capture button on. Well, there. Oh, okay, but so you can't oh, like also, no, we can't also, plug it into a, like a capture kit. Also, also um, somebody Pokemon, will make something. Pokemon Championships. Well, I'm, they'll be played on normal switches. Not ever. You play on your own consoles when you go to these right, things. Right. Well, your Pokemon are stuck on whatever console. Nintendo will have some magic they'll, solution, they just I'm like sure they, they had for their their capture solutions. For yeah, the DS. I guess it's it's important it's important to point out that this is not at least from our optics here. This is not designed to replace the traditional core skew mm-hmm. of the Nintendo Switch. Mm-hmm. Definitely yeah. not. I think no. that this is definitely just a second pillar to uh, mm-hmm. exist alongside it. In a weird way, Nintendo is now once again a company that makes consoles and handhelds. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and especially because uh, of the patent filing, right, that we just saw yeah. today. which was... Or recently. Yeah, here we go. Um, this is from The Verge. Nintendo is updating the original Switch with a new CPU and storage according to filings with the FCC. 
So they they filed something that basically said we'd like to make a small tweak so that we don't have to get completely reevaluated by the right. FCC. And it, it said something along the lines of like updating the CPU and the on the internal memory or the NAND memory. It, but is this the Switch Pro? This is the normal Switch. Oh, okay. So the ski, like it, 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 presumably they're just making a quiet little update to. And this is what was rumored this. back in April. Analysts said there would be a modest upgrade to the base Switch, and so this is. Might be that. Okay. Well, the question is, will this just replace the current switch, and they'll, you know, like the the original Xbox replaced the hard drive, or right, you know, exactly. they, there were upgrades like that, but they sure. didn't change the brand name. Whereas for Xbox One S, they did, right? There were major upgrades there, and they wanted to make sure that users knew. So that's the question now: Is this just an incremental step where they're replacing chipsets? They have new manufacturers. Maybe they have a, you know, they're no longer manufacturing in the same factory, so they need to make some changes to the suppliers too. Or is this the rumored Switch Pro, where there is a marked upgrade? Maybe games like The Witcher run at a better frame rate right. or better resolution. Or who knows? Mm-hmm. Who knows? Uh, but we don't know that yet. Obviously, um, you know, a lot of the rumors about um, a 4K Switch releasing. This summer were a little off. Yeah, I haven't heard <laughs> anything about a hardware upgrade, but we now know about this this more compact hardware, and the more the merrier. I, mm-hmm. I think it's cool. So, are you going to get one when it comes out? Yes. Right. You yes. Know. yes. Come on. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm just tr- having trouble yeah. deciding on color because I like all of them, even though you yeah. hate I'm, all of them. I'm going to need to <laughs> to hold one and play on one to make a decision. Yeah, that's actually a really thing. good point. Hmm. Yeah, like. I had the Is original DS, right? and I didn't want a DS Lite until my friend came over with the DS Lite, and I held it mm. and I played on it, and it was like, oh wow, this actually is a really big improvement. But I don't. I guess we'll just wait and see if I have that same reaction. The, yeah. it would ha- something disastrous would have to happen, in my opinion, t- for me to not n- want to buy another Switch for two hundred dollars, basically, because yeah. I just need, and that's my personal situation. Yeah. I want another Switch right now, and this is a lot cheaper, and I don't care about the. Docking. This is an awesome. Such, this is an awesome solution to people who only have one TV in their living rooms. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but multiple yeah. people or no That's, TV in their living rooms. Yeah, but um, yeah. there yeah. are some people that don't even they don't want to play this game or play play the Switch. But IGN tweeted out a poll today that was sort of just like, "How do you play your Switch? Did you it guys see that?" Even. Yeah, and it was yeah. like it was like forty eight to fifty five. I think we're yeah. fifty five percent docked now. Yeah, forty five percent undocked. I don't now. think there was a choice for both. Because I'm, I play. This was more. What do you play more? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you play more. Okay. Yeah. yeah so it was. It I was, do both. It was practically yeah. split. Um, yeah. Hey, the one thing we didn't talk much about is the D-pad. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. There's a D-pad. Yeah. So obviously, they replaced the buttons, which were on the left Joy-Con, because you could turn it sideways mm-hmm. with Ninten- the D-pad, the classic <laughs> Nintendo invention. Nintendo doesn't want to talk much about the D-pad either, because they already said it's not coming to other Joy-Cons. So yeah. that did they say that? Yeah. They yes. Did. Yeah. Ba- Bowser said, Rrr. no, Bowser said um, <laughs> that there are no plans or nothing to announce for new iteration of the Joy-Con, which I find really annoying. Yeah. yeah. Because the, the third-party Joy-Con are not as good. Yeah, the Hori know. one cannot Hori doesn't be used. have Bluetooth. It also, it can only be used in handheld mode. Yes, so you, you, can't, can't, you can't detach it. Yeah, you can't no rumble in the grip and play on TV. And you I can't detach it, and if you leave it on, that's the one that drains your battery, right? Oh. But yes, which as, is yes. such a such a catch twenty two. Yeah, <laughs> as a multi Joy Con owner, yeah. um, I I would just love a D pad one for on the go because I do play games that where digital movement is just better, mm-hmm. and like I don't like the buttons as yep. as a D pad, and it's like. I feel like Nintendo is doing their no, current I, Switch owners a real disservice in I, releasing I modded, one. I modded my own, and it's like it's that's a you did too, and it's like it's a fun thing to do, but it's not that's not practical for the average user. That was like a stressful ass Sunday morning for me. Yeah, <laughs> like and I should, was sitting there with like a tiny tri wing or a tiny little screwdriver, and actually I started on a Saturday night mm-hmm. and just walked out into my living room like defeated, and my wife was like, "What's wrong?" And I'm like, "I, I broke my controller." Aww. Mm-hmm. and she's like, "Okay, well you can, you can go to the store in the morning and get more." And I'm like, no, this is more that like I went in to fix them and I broke them. And then yeah. I went to bed and I woke up in the morning, made a huge pot of coffee and sat down. I'm like, I'm fixing this thing. And I did. <laughs> and now I have a modded D-pad. That is not a practical human way to live. No. <laughs> like I would love if Nintendo just made a D-pad Joy-Con and slapped it uh, on there. I mean, they should in honor of their more. in yeah. honor of their, their <laughs> NES. They release new NES games every month in honor of that. Just release an NES set. 
That's not this the full size ones, the Famicom and NES controllers, but just NES themed Joy-Con with a D pad on the I, left one. I used to think the reason they wouldn't do this would, was because it was like inherent, meanness. It was inherently against the branding <laughs> and the iconography of the Switch, which, as we see with the Switch Lite, doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, throw it in the trash. <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> hey Nintendo, Mister Nintendo, if you're listening to this, mm-hmm. come on, D D pad, left yeah. Joy-Con. I'll, I also want a Joy-Con with the D-pad and the Joy-Con joystick switched. I want that. Okay, that's now You're getting greedy. Like, this is, this is greedy. Look, and I, I still want yes. <laughs> I still want little Donkey Kong bongos no. that you slide <laughs> on no. the side of your Switch, but you know what? We don't always get what we want. <laughs> Playing with your thumbs. I keep saying this. I will say it till it happens. You can play Dark Souls with it. Yeah. <laughs> Someone will, whether you can or not. <laughs> nice. So, so hey, moving on. Some I I wanted to bring this up specifically. Uh, Dr. Mario is out. Yeah. Mm. On Mario the World. phone. Yeah. Yeah, I, I played it. <laughs> what? So I, everybody's so negative about this game. I want to, I'm, I'm not trying to play cheerleader here, but I, th- no. I think it's fun. Yeah, like, no. I, I wasn't expecting it to be exactly Dr. Mario because on a touchscreen device where pieces fall from the top, it's a pain in the butt to see where you're directing something unless you have virtual joystick controls. Then come on, they're not going to do that, right? It's just I, I don't love virtual D-pads. And so instead of it falling from the top, you're sliding things into place and pieces, uh, you know, your you're levels sliding, are underwater and, they're, and they automatically move up as you release them. That's not water. That's it like is, a man's body. It is. <laughs> Everybody's right. It is not exactly Dr. Mario. Stop it. Uh, it's not exactly Dr. Mario. It's a match three game, not a match four game. It's not the frantic, fast paced stuff. I don't think it could be done very well. Um, I don't think Tetris is as good on a touch screen as it is on a an, on a controller. And so I, I like that they changed it. And I also don't think it's lazy. They added a ton of like Mario items to it. You get turtle shells. When you trigger them, they go horizontally. You can use them in your strategy. I don't think it's lazy either. I think that the, I would say that the pricing structure okay. is uninspired like the mm-hmm. the actual sort of increments in which you pay to keep your doctor not <laughs> tired or whatever you're paying money to hearts do. you're buying hearts yeah to keep your doctor from getting tired but right? you also you yes, have to throw money at your doctor bills. to get him the work yeah that's the that's which is real. Like, that's a documentary right there yeah no but um you also earn hearts when you beat a level you get a heart you max out at five if you don't play your game every what is it like 30 minutes you mm-hmm. get a heart back yeah. too so it's like a very traditional monetization model but, but if you want to keep playing it and you want to buy hearts what do you have to buy you have to buy diamonds you have to buy stupid diamonds you know like at the doctor Yes. <laughs> Where does that come in, diamonds? And uh, why is, they're just like, oh, you gotta buy diamonds. Is it's that like, is that what bugs you? That it's the currency. The, the entire <laughs> universe of like it, Mario items they had to pick from. They could have been like, it's P wings, and they're like, no, it's diamonds. Should it have been like healthcare cards or something? Maybe red coins. It doesn't fit for doctors, and it You're doesn't right. fit for Mario's. It's they do just have the coins diamond. in there, so they're coins hidden in the blocks that you trigger. Right. Um, no, that's, but, that's some that's some Zynga shit. But look, the the <laughs> the obvious thing that rankles people is that it has microtransactions. You play for free for an hour. I saw some people saying, I tried for ten minutes. It was asking me for money. You're full of crap. You can. <laughs> play for free for an hour you have unlimited lives so that's not true um but I, after I that think it's actually not an hour i think it's just until you beat the first 20 is levels it? and then it and then it kicks over the, to the like heart system yeah. so i definitely never ran into trouble for an hour mm-hmm. and, and and had to pay yes you run yeah. out of hearts but then you spent the hearts mm-hmm. yeah like yeah um and these but, mobile games aren't generally meant to be played for like a ten hour session anyway. Y- yeah. And, yeah. And and like but I I also don't want to defend microtransactions. It is a payment system designed to exploit people who just can't help themselves. They can't wait, right? <laughs> it's like And it gives you so much to buy. Yeah. There are four different items that you can bring into a level. There are three different items during levels you can buy. Yep. Buy diamonds. And so would I There's love... There's a gotcha system in Dr. Mario what? where you have to... Please explain. You have to spend coins or gems to hire, to staffing, to hire assistants and also doctors to your pool. You can have your familiar. And you get one doctor who then has two staff members with them that are like, you can have a Goomba and it'll give you like a 1% increase to your score in every level. So it's a lot of there's there's systems in it that regardless of whether you can play the game and have fun without them 
feel grimy. They, they do. Yeah, yeah well, I, I mean, totally if, agree with if that. If I was on a hospital bed and the Goomba walked in with a scalpel in his mouth, I would feel grimy. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Also, he's doing work in the middle of a field. Like, he's not even in a hospital. He's, like, out in the wild, like the Oregon Sometimes Trail. Sometimes he's a naturalist. You got to do what you got to do, Brian. Yeah. It's weird. Anyway, so, but, but I, I was expecting the monetization system to be a, a little bit worse. I thought, look, Nintendo's tried a bunch of different things. Fully, like, pay, paying for a full game or paying for sections of a game. That was the best gotcha way. System. That was the really good way to do it. The $10 <laughs> the whole game. That was good. This is very much in line with other puzzle games. So, yes, it is a little bit un, uninspired on mobile. Uh, I wish there was an option to just give them 10 bucks and say, don't bother me again. But that's clearly not the mobile business my, model. My biggest issue with this game is that Dr. Mario is one of my favorite puzzle games of all time. And this doesn't play like This it, is not. It's but very it has different. the same title. That's my... So that's should have been Dr. Wario. Sure, yeah, yeah, but even that is a WarioWare mini game that plays like Dr. Mario. Okay, awesome. Dr. Waluigi then, featuring Zach Ryan. Okay, they haven't done they've done Dr. Luigi. They've never done Dr. Dr. Waluigi. Wa that's disgusting. I, Why would you allow him? But I I actually think this is regardless of its pedigree, this is more Mario than the original Dr. Mario because it has items like it it has coins question mark blocks turtle shells whereas like the dr mario franchise and i love four player dr mario has kind of been stuck like it hasn't done anything new except for like a little wii u touch screen mode here and there but right. it, but it hasn't changed and you can play this game on any platform not and, switch and so <laughs> i i mean you I can am, play the nes one, no but, but you can absolutely play it on the switch but not not mobile i am happy they didn't just port it and did something different and the game's fine no, I know. You can play the yeah. NES version of Dr. Mario on Switch, but they've made like new versions for Wii U that were awesome, right? Like Dr. Luigi is gorgeous. The art's really good. It's got like local multiplayer and all that but fun stuff. But it's still very simplistic. Why would a doctor like, bring a turtle shell into a man's body? I know. But like if you just got the original Tetris now, would you be very excited? No, it's, it's, it's cool that we got office. It's cool we got Tetrisphere and Bomb Bliss and not Hatris. I, so so <laughs> let me let me let me Don't don't no Hatris. Let me let me say my two things Patrick. with this game. Yeah. What about Wetris? Wetris oh, was not bad. It wasn't for great. Right, was that a real game? That's we're gonna, yes. We're going to move on from talking about Dr. <laughs> Wait, well, Mario. Wait, <laughs> is real. If I, can, if I can say two things real quick. Yes, yeah, stop. The, the two things that bug me about this game are I hate a puzzle game that has lives. Because every time you fail a level or restart the level, you it uses another heart. Yeah. And you do get a heart when you beat a level, so yeah. you can keep going if you keep winning. But, but if you you can't get a heart for a level you've already beaten them. You also right. yeah. cannot store Only more than what five hearts. Five. Yeah. yeah, it caps out. But the idea that I would play any puzzle game, which is inherently I love puzzle games that are about experimentation and figuring out the right answer and failing and trying again. The fact that they would ever put a life system on a puzzle game is mind boggling to me. That said really? That's not even my biggest complaint mm. with the game. Are you my saying biggest we should have a wiki so that people can just look it up and not waste their lives? Oh. Mm. <laughs> it's called cheating. The other, <laughs> the other part of this game that honestly is just the truth of the matter for me is I think it's really boring. Mm -hmm. I just am not amused by it. I don't know why, and I'm not a huge mobile game fan. It's yep. just like I played this game for probably three hours, and I was just like not all at once, like on yep. the train and here and there, and I just am kind of like – K, like I'm just really I, ambivalent. I 100%ed okay. Mario right. Run. I played Animal Crossing on mobile for like almost a year. Um, what? I, See, I think this is way better than Animal Crossing. What? <laughs> Animal Crossing is like take a a a lovely game about friendship and exploration and like just make it really tiny. <laughs> Whereas like this Dr. Mario at least has more features than the real Dr. Mario. No, it anyway. doesn't. It, do it doesn't let you play regular ass Dr. Mario. <laughs> okay. But you already have that. No, we don't have to do this anymore. You already have Not this. on my phone. Um, so <laughs> I, I already have Animal Crossing too. I, 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 will, I will concede this, it, this Dr. Mario feels like the puzzle mode inside a puzzle game. Like a lot of endless drop games have a puzzle mode where you're trying to solve puzzles. Yeah. And that's what it is. It is very Candy Crush like in that, in that way. Yeah. Yep. So those are our Dr. Mario World impressions now available for free on the phone unless you pay money for it. I like how we had our revenge on Casey for the Pokemon segment <laughs> with Dr. Mario. Hey. She's like, can you just finish? <laughs> no, it's okay. It, it was, I, I don't know. I lost. We didn't guys. make any pill desserts for you or anything. Yeah, I'm, I'm upset. <laughs> we should have. Where's my pill dessert? That's right. So on to some other news. Um, did you guys know there's a Wind Waker village in the Breath of the Wild and none of us freaking noticed it? That's not true. I mean, not? we noticed a long time ago. Why didn't we Why didn't we <laughs> post anything about it, Pear? You know, 
We should have. I think you should have given Pear yeah. a dessert at the start of the show. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's being feisty. Um, no, I, th- I look, I think a lot of people really didn't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I saw this um, a while back. I thought we... I thought we Whoops. did. I thought we had it in our wiki too, as like a homage. An Easter egg. Yeah, it's oh, really cool I'm though. Go. Yeah, we should add it. Yeah, we should. So you know this what else is happened today, parent. Uh huh. Nintendo Switch Lite. Okay. Which needed a wiki. Well, the kids <laughs> uh, look. The the kids at Game Explain posted a video yes. with this in it and and said, "Hey, look, we 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 found this thing." Um, and then a lot of people said, "No, you didn't find this. This yeah. already was known." But it's like, look, the, they they discovered something that wasn't widely known, and they certainly didn't know. And I think the majority of people here in the office also didn't. <laughs> and so I think it it was a cool thing to share. But yeah, there's a place in Wind Waker that looks like Outside, outside Island. Island. So it's that um, whole like ladder yeah. and platform and the little beach. And if you're looking for it, it's called a uh, Lurlin vi- Village, mm-hmm. and it is in the southeast corner of Breath of the Wild. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was the last place I ever went in that game. Yeah, like it was the last corner of the map I Me didn't too. explore. Yeah. Same, but yeah, it's, it's um, it's a really cool, it's a really cool little throwback. I think I I, I love it. Mm-hmm. I don't know, like people shouldn't get mad for. Um, you know, others discovering it now. I wasn't trying to be mad. Oh, no, no, no you're not. <laughs> no, we got you. You're fine. Yeah. You're doing good out here. No, I'm, I'm mad at everybody. I recognize that you knew that existed. Yes. I am so I great not. because... <laughs> no, it, I don't know. This, this, this is cool, but I thought everybody knew. So, hey, uh, last week was the Pokemon Go anniversary. Happy anniversary. I knew that, too. No. Happy third anniversary, Pokemon Go. Uh, wow, and it it's three years old. It both Candy Crush and Clash Royale, but not Clash Clans, over the last three years. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, it's going to make $3 billion by the end of the year. This is a reminder. This is just like Just Dance, where we have all collectively moved on, except Andrew Goldfarb. I haven't moved on from Just Dance. No, okay. I mean, from Pokemon <laughs> Go. Um, but this game makes a ton of money, and there are lots of people still playing. Just like Just Dance, it was one of the top sellers of the I generation. I took my daughter to a children's playground the other day so she could go on the slide and the swings. And in the corner of the children's playground were huddled a group of adult men yeah. who I at first thought were drug dealers. And I was like, oh, those old roustabouts. And it turns out they were all wearing Pokemon Go shirts and they were trading their little animal friends with each other. Oh, that's so wholesome. That was sweet. That's they might have also been selling drugs. But, you know, it's, yeah. it was the thought that Is that your it's favorite Pokemon Go memory? I think so. That and the time Andrew Goldfarb fell into the bay. Cool. That was <laughs> painful, I he think, just for walked him. Off a pier- a he walked off a pier. A pier. So, okay. <laughs> 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 it was very painful. Uh, Wizards Unite definitely did not replace Pokemon Go. Nope. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. We'll see. I mean, like, never say never. Fortnite launched and was a dud. Mm-hmm. And now, and then Fortnite, Fortnite relaunched and was a giant hit. So we'll we'll see what happens with Wizards Unite. But um, I think Pokemon that, like, Go has legs. Keeps what's on your going. favorite Pokemon Go memory pair? I know, just the seeing people, like, f- the kind of when it first kicked off and you saw people with their phones and you kind of, you were in the know and you're like, I know what you're doing. Before it became, like, giant mainstream. And then seeing it get bigger and bigger and going, oh, my God, everybody's playing this game. I think the fact that it, it, launched, awesome. it launched in summer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember being here in San Francisco, there was signage everywhere mm-hmm. outside of like local bars and restaurants and, and bookstores and stuff like that. That was just like, Hey, come on in and catch a Pokemon and buy a beer or like mm-hmm. buy a book. Um, and it was just eat a cream dessert. Yeah. <laughs> eat a big jar of cream. Um, mm-hmm. it, there was like a whole bunch of people just like coming together to play that game. And I think there was such a magical, incredible zeitgeist moment for our species. Like mm-hmm. even yeah. just for video games in general, I've never, I've, I've seen video games take over, you know, conversations and, and, and groups of people like in, in our industry and in our world. But to see like the just the entire planet just catching Pokemon at the same time was beautiful. Yeah, it was really cool. Very cool. I completely agree. I think um, so. I have memories on Facebook that come up. And I think sometime last week I posted it's 2.30 in the morning. We're out looking for a war turtle. Mm. And that was kind of like my life for two weeks. That, like, yeah. Because we they had the footprints things where you could actually see Pokemon that were nearby, and then mm-hmm. we'd go out and look for these things on skateboards like we were teenagers. I yeah. went I went to Gamescom that year in Germany, and uh, me, Zach Ryan, shout out to Zach, and Andrew Goldfarb, shout out to him for falling off the pier, uh, stuck around <laughs> for a few extra days, and we went to Amsterdam and Paris just for like fun, just to hang out, because we're like, we're out here, might as well you know, see Europe. Andrew went for Farfetch, come a- on. Andrew was or on whatever. his phone the entire, a- Amsterdam is one of the most beautiful places in the world. And Am- uh, Andrew was on his phone the entire time trying to catch a Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime, that's what, that was the European. He finally yeah. got one, and I got this video of him, and he's, he was like, 
I got him. And we were like, oh, cool. Are you excited? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> it was like this like empty, hollow victory. Oh, no. But yeah, we were walking around. <laughs> we were walking around Amsterdam for like three days just going like, it's Mr. Mime. It's Mr. Mime. <laughs> Mr. Mime is in the world while Andrew was trying to catch him. Oh, God. Yeah. It was a fun time. It was a it was a cool experience. I I, I loved everything that game did, and then like with anything popular, it kind of gets old, and then it gets negative. You're like, oh my god, stop already! But um, I I, I want to make sure people uh, people also remember the good times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, we spent so much time talking about the Nintendo Switch that we don't have a whole lot of time. We got a couple minutes. Everything right? else, yeah, we got a couple minutes. So really quick, uh, there's a rewind feature coming to the Nintendo Switch Online and Donkey Kong Three and the Wrecking Crew. The mm-hmm. rewind feature makes it so that if you hold the ZL and ZR buttons, I believe, it will rewind your gameplay, and so you can like replay. Uh, a section of game that you want to play in mm-hmm. for the NES. Yeah, did they also specifically for the NES online yes. games, right? Did, yeah. did they add the ability to turn off the menus finally? Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> the overlay? Yeah, right. Yeah. Not sure. Mm-hmm. But also, there are some games out this week, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. including. So we already talked about Doctor Mario World. Oh, let's there's talk some... about that. You? No. <laughs> no. There's also Soul Seraph. Mm-hmm. I haven't played it, but pair. Uh, I played it on Switch for a little bit. I'm a huge Act Razor fan, and this is—it's more than an homage. It's—it's—it's it's, it's a little bit of a of a of a ripoff by a company that does not own the Act Razor license. They even got the original composer to do the title theme. It is exactly like the original Act Razor from the, from the Super NES, where you have a world building mode and then you have side scrolling battle modes. The Switch port port is no good. Mm-hmm. It is very blurry. It is choppy. Um, and the game itself, it's 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 all right. Like I, I'm, I'm I, so bummed to hear that. I, I literally just bought it before I sat down yeah. to do this episode with you, and you're like, it it's bad. And, and honestly, <laughs> like <laughs> Act, Act Razor is it's more about nostalgia, and the music is freaking fantastic yep. in the original game. And um, it is a very simple side scroller, and this is very very simple as well, and not that well designed. And the uh, the world building sections are actually a little bit more advanced. They have little uh, little tower defense stuff built in. Um, the original world building, uh, like the map stuff, was very very simple. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all right if you're really into Act Razor. It's worth a look, but I I, I was disappointed. We have a full review of that mm-hmm. too that you can check. We out. gave it a six five. Six five. I'd say probably the Switch version would okay. suffer a little mm-hmm. bit more. It is mm-hmm. blurry. <laughs> we also have a blazing chrome coming out on 7-Eleven for mm-hmm. $17. Yeah, this is kind of like a new but retro Contra Metal Slug style game mm-hmm. that yep. just is really cool looking and worth checking out for fans of yeah, the Yeah, it's fun. I've been playing a bit of it. It was interesting because I jumped right out of the Contra collection, which I've been playing a lot of too, and mm-hmm. right into this, and it totally just gelled. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it feels like it should have been part of that. That said, it is competing with the Contra collection, which is 20 bucks mm-hmm. and nets you like five or six yeah. Contra games. So As opposed to one for 17 Yeah, one that's brand new and then doesn't have Lance and Billy or whatever those boys' names are. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's cool. Uh, look it up. We've also got Dragon Quest Builders 2 out on the 12th, which is not yet, and I haven't been able to play it. I very much want to. Mm-hmm. We do have an extensive preview up from E3 on IGN.com. And also, by the time you are listening to this, probably our review will be up, because it's going up Thursday at 4 p.m., I think. And oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so this is really not interested in this one. This is not a quick and dirty shoddy port. It no. actually looks really nice on Switch. That I, I played a yeah. ton of the last one. I believe there's a demo out for this game. Mm-hmm. If what? I know there definitely is one for the first one. Well, um, it'll it'll probably be out out by the time most people are listening. Anyway. True. Oh, that's, but yeah, if, <laughs> if you if you have any sort of like qualms about what this is, um, mm-hmm. you can you can play a little slice of it. Yep. The first game had a really cool demo where everything you did carried over to the retail version, so hmm. that was nice because I put some time into that. There is a, definitely a demo on cool. the PS4. Mm-hmm. Great. <laughs> <laughs> you can check out on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. So there's also God Eater Three, mm-hmm. which is kind of like a hyper action anime anime stylized monster hunter is that but Um, you're killing oni you're killing japanese demons yeah it's Mm -hmm. it looks almost mech like the Mm. monsters do they look a lot more technical it's like very futuristic compared to what wild wild looking game yeah it looks really cool i have not played this one i know it's a surprise um but that's out on the 12th for 60 (laughs) dollars um also there's a big list of indie games 
uh, that Tom likes. Yes. Okay. So I just want to. I know we're running long. Tom section. So really quick, this weekend is or this week is crazy. Like in the next three days, there's there's just a ton of really cool indie Switch ports that are coming out. So I wanted to name a few that I can at least recommend to you guys to look at. Whether you like them or not is up to you, but I I can at least vouch for them. So uh, the first one is Skulls of the Shogun Bonafide Edition uh, is coming out on the 11th for twenty dollars. Very weird, cool little kind of strategy e game. Very very nice art style. Uh, Way Out is coming out on the 11th for three dollars. This is a teeny tiny little puzzle game that I think started on mobile, but it's by this puzzle designer. I play these on Steam all the time. They're literally like one dollar on Steam, mm-hmm. just like go quick puzzle games. Right. Um, they usually will only take you an hour or two to beat. Not to be confused with a way out. Not to be confused with a way out. Just mm-hmm. way out one word. Uh, so that's cool if you like puzzle games. Uh, Streets of Rogue come out comes out on the twelfth for twenty dollars. This is a uh, what immersive sim is that term that the Brits like to use a lot, which basically means like uh, uh, Dishonored, right? Or like a game where you figure it out yourself and you go through this world and have a lot of choice and you're usually very stealthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a top-down pixelated roguelike version of an immersive sim. So you're sneaking through streets and can kind of like figure out how you want to get through each environment. Mm. Very, very cool game. Uh, Lethal League Blaze is coming out on Switch on the 12th for $20. Lethal League, if you don't know, is kind of like intense side-scrolling fighting version of Pong. So it's like Hmm. a 1v1 game or a 2v2 game I think you can do. And it's like you're hitting a ball back and forth and it's like a sport. It's really cool. I thought you said Illegally Blaze and I was like, (laughs) shout out to Zach Ryan. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Uh, There's also Super Mutant Alien Assault on the 12th for $10. If you guys have played Super Crate Box from Vlambeer, this Mm -hmm. is base. it's not the same developer, but it's basically an alien fleshed out version of that it, i think they literally on their steam page call it like the got like the 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 citizen cane of super crate box clones is their <laughs> tagline that's great so it's like that idea of just these quick procedurally generated fight rooms or you just go and try to beat beat them uh, and then the last one i wanted to mention was dead in vinland mm-hmm. true viking edition is coming out on the 11th for 28 dollars. and i held this one for last because no pair you've been playing some yeah of it. you've played it before too i right? played it on steam so now. it's a it's basically a viking survival simulation uh-huh. where you know you're basically stranded in the new world with your viking posse and you need to manage everything it's like a tr- it's a turn-based system where you manage you know food supply for them but also it has combat in it like uh how would you compare how would you describe that it's like the um it's it's kind of like a tactics mixed with uh darkest dungeon da- yeah like darkest dungeons where the the dungeon where the characters are all lined up mm-hmm. and and attack um their enemies um it's uh it's it's a very deep uh, management sim a lot going on yeah I, the switch version is really nice it it runs nice it's well put together it has uh you know the game's got beautiful hand-drawn artwork the art is very like it it kind of rips off Banner Saga, yeah. but it's not. It, it's so pretty. You're like, all right, you're ripping off Banner Saga, but you did a good job of it. So mm-hmm. yeah, if you if you really like if you like survival games and then kind of sim games, I think you'll really dig this. It has so many different systems and what you take care of. Uh, for example, people can get depressed, <laughs> but you can fix that by building a bar, of course. Okay. Like you can build That's a true. tavern. Yeah, it's cool. Just make um, worse. But uh, no, it's a it's, <laughs> it's a it's a very different game from what we have on Switch so far. So it's a really interesting uh, interesting addition. I'm very this. interested in that. Yeah, yeah. What's that, that was that game called yeah. again. Dead in Vinland. Mm-hmm. So that's six Switch ports that are coming out literally in the next two or three days from recording this. That are all very very good games mm-hmm. and are worth at least glancing at that's if so you many. if you're looking for something else. So we did inadvertently answer some question block. Plan- questions during our conversations already. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. So there's one question block question I would like to ask, and this mm-hmm. is from Kevin Schuler from, uh, he emailed us at NBC at IGN.com. And he says, before anything, just wanted to say you guys are such a great group of people. Aww. I love listening to the show every week to get the latest Nintendo news from you guys. Also, the puns are phenomenal. For my question, if you choose to accept it, is which dog would you rather have as a pet? Poochie from Yoshi's Crafted World or Underdog from Mario Maker? Undo Dog. Yes. Undo dog. Why did I say under? Oh. Underdog. Undo dog. Undo dog. No. Undo dog or Poochie? What about Yoshi? <laughs> Yoshi's <laughs> not, not a dog. dog. What is he, a horse? Poochie is Yoshi's dog. So undo dog. So? 
And and do dog guess, has the cone I guess of shame. Goofy had Goofy yeah. and Pluto. Well, it, yeah. it looks like okay. a piece of bread to me. Well, As someone knows, he's got the yeah. cone of shame. It's just stylized oh, yeah. squarish, right? Because mm-hmm. he's so accident prone. No, yeah. it does. It does, I, it does look like when they <laughs> there was that meme that a while back yeah. where cats they would put yeah. a cat head through like a, a slice of Wonder Bread. Yeah, that's not what it is. I think that's a, it. Might be. No. I thought it was just because the dog, dog face is the button, so it's like he he's popped out of the button and his body's just behind it. Okay, I always saw it as a cone of shame, and as someone who has had a dog who had to wear the cone of shame because she broke her leg. I don't want that anymore. I'll go with Poochie. Poochie can find things. Poochie can find me hidden items, and that's my dog. I feel like Poochie is like an awesome pet, but it would also get like a lot of like household stuff stuck to it. Mm. Like it would go under your couch and like it would come out with like a cheese it stuck to its neck. Yeah, Aww. but on the it's just like a very like, and also it would probably give you static shocks every time you touch. On it. the other hand, it's like if I have a lot of spikes in my house, and you can use Poochie to get across spikes. Why would you easily? have a lot of spikes in your house? Defense. Bowser does. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Is Bowser uh, a dog? Against ninjas. I I'd, ch- I'd choose Poochie too because he's also doubles as a mode of pr- transportation. There you go. Random work. Yeah. 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 yeah Poochie giant. giant and you're from dog. San Francisco. You, you, you like your scooters and. No, Poochie. <laughs> I'm would from probably South. Get, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not Poochie from San would probably get hit by an angry motorist here. Maybe that's not a good idea. Hmm. Poochie mm. sounds like hmm. a startup company in San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> it is a startup company <laughs> that, like, in San Francisco. But is it? But it has zero instead of O's. Uber. Poochie. Oh Poochie. This is <laughs> you totally, she had totally me. made it up. <laughs> yeah, she had me. And this slogan is boop, boop. you. I, you like legit. Have, I was like, what? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. So like, yeah, they have dog drivers. It's crazy. <laughs> so and there's more to this message as well. It says, "I am a graphic designer, and since I love the show so much, I decided to make a little portrait of Fred <laughs> here. I thought he deserved it because of his great Navi impression from the last few episodes. Thanks again, guys, and I hope you all enjoyed your. Okay, form. I can't wait to see this. All right. If you guys are watching, you can now see it. All right, show me, hit me. Oh, yeah, I like it. I That's look like um, I look like Joaquin Phoenix. I don't know. <laughs> Agree to <laughs> disagree. Sure, 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 pair. I don't sure know pair. who that is. I look crazy. No, it's great. Uh, thank you very much. That's awesome. That looks awesome. That's very nice. I don't think you. you look like Joaquin Phoenix Listen. at all. <laughs> yeah. There or here. Thank you mm. for the art. <laughs> well, Busy that's about little all the time baby. we have for today. I hope you enjoyed our conversations about uh, Alchemy, the cream Pokemon, mm. and the Nintendo I enjoyed Switch it. Life. I ate it. <laughs> <laughs> deeply disturbed. And Dr. Mario and all of the indie games coming out this week. Yep. Remember, this is NBC, IGN's Nintendo podcast, and you can watch us or listen to us every Thursday at 3 p.m. on your preferred podcasting platform or YouTube or IGN.com. And I'm your host, Casey DeFritis, and... Tom, where can they find you? Uh, at Tom R. Marks on Twitter. You can find me at Shiny KCD on Twitter. At Pear IGN on Twitter. And I'm at Agent Bizzle on Twitter. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, this is the only place you can get the cream. <laughs> what? <laughs>